Greetings, everyone, to another episode of Creativity and the Paranormal. And today we have the fabulous D.V. Stone, uh, author of, uh, well, contemporary romance, but also paranormal romance. Mm -hmm. So I got that right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, I shall begin. First of all, before I uh, share Dee's fabulous bio and blurb uh, for the book that she's sharing tonight, I'm going to share uh, my spooky mug. It's I went with Nightmare Before Christmas because um, I love the colors. <laughs> yes, I've had this for a long time. Uh, I'm putting it. Sorry, there's a feline on my. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> they want they wanted to uh, come tonight. She wanted to visit tonight. She's upset that uh, I am. Uh, that's Vivian Lee. Anyway, uh, so back to the book. Um, it is. Uh, I'm doing a shameless plug for my um, my own book. You know, DV. You know, we're celebrating Christmas in July for people who have uh, Christmas books. Now, mine is a paranormal one as well. It's called A Kelly Society Christmas. And my, of course, my website is at the bottom of this YouTube video, so I won't go on about me. But because uh, I wanted to get something with Christmas that was also paranormal, I chose this mug, uh, the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Like, <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> anyway, so... DV, would you like to share one of your uh, mugs or glasses? Well, I don't have any paranormal mugs, and I was looking for something fun to um, pour one of my favorite beverages, which is a white wine. And I got my lovely little, it's like a little Mexican kind of, but it's got flair and stuff to it. So I really, so cheers to everyone and you. Right, and, yes, uh, thank you. I love that. That's a gorgeous glass. It makes me want um, a serious drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably should have a margarita, but you know. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, water in mind. So anyway, so that is fabulous. I love the room you're zooming from. It has quite an ambiance itself. It's very uh, 30s, 40s kind of. Some people would think it would yeah. be masculine, but I just find it very warm and relaxing. Yeah. I have some antiques and stuff in here, which I'm really, really fond of. And, um, you know, and uh, the, actually, real quick, I'll tell you about the ceiling because yeah, yeah. you mentioned yeah. the ceiling. It's yeah. not a copper ceiling. It is that that fake stuff that you put on like a drop ceiling. But my husband oh. took and spray painted it so it looks like copper ceiling and we put it up because who could afford a copper ceiling you know um but yeah, yeah he did he did all the work in here he did all the paneling and um just built everything to my specification while i was on a trip to alaska so oh, that's fabulous i would, I never would know. <laughs> right i never would have known and um that's amazing so uh i i think that's a fabulous uh item to have in your uh room where you do your writing I suppose that's your library you say right library slash office so um and a place where you know I'll hang out with friends and we'll just sit and we'll talk about the important things of life you know so oh that's wonderful yeah uh so oh I'm sorry I have my visitor again honey you're gonna have to sit down <laughs> I needed more light from the hallway so I decided to do it this way Okay, so uh, D.B. Stone, who we have here tonight, is an award-winning multi-genre, traditionally and independently published author. She writes books people want to read. Uh, whether romance or fantasy, contemporary or mid-grade, uh, her, sorry, her stories are about importance of friends and family about overcoming obstacles with often humor. Around, uh, excuse me, Around the Fire is a popular weekly blog, want to get this right, <laughs> where she introduces both established and new authors, giving an insider's look into their lives and books, as well as tidbits about her own life. DV is also a bi-monthly contributor to Still Moments magazine, sharing beloved recipes. Young. <laughs> now retired, she's a full-time author and incorporates her life experiences into her books. 
After a varied career as a former emergency medical technician, the proprietor of a coffee shop and a small restaurant slash ice cream stand. The years following were as a manager in an animal emergency hospital and her last position in a human medical office. <laughs> Quite the gambit there. Now, uh, when not behind the wheel of two hoots, a 41 foot long, 13.2 feet high, fifth wheel camper, <laughs> She rambles around town in northern New Jersey in a white Camaro. Oh, that's fabulous. She also loves tra travel and history. DB is a wife to an amazing husband, mother to one son, and not your average grandma to three beautiful grands. A woman of faith, she believes and trusts in God. Quote, my greatest pleasures are spending time outside with friends and family, cooking over the open fire, sipping a glass of wine, and reading, unquote. Is it Hallie or Haley? It's Hallie. Hallie, her rescue dog, always reminds her to let readers know, woof, woof. <laughs> and that's literally translated as support your local animal rescue. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I... I included my furry friends earlier, but they've left us alone now. And uh, you can get, I'm going to put this in the notes below, but you can get more info from www.dvstoneauthor.com. All right. That is quite the bio, let me say. That is amazing. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's hard to put, well, you know, I'm at a stage of my life where I've lived in a lot of years and it's hard to put all those years into like one paragraph, you know, so. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And it's it's so um, captivating to, to just read everything you've done. So also tonight, uh, we're uh, focusing on Sea Hunter, her new uh, paranormal romance. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now that was, I show it was just published March 16th, 2023. Mm-hmm. And here is Sea Hunter. <laughs> On the turbulent high seas, an archaeologist must protect a historic shipwreck from treasure hunters, not fall for one. From the point of view of Zara Horburn, I'm a sea hunter. As an underwater archaeologist and professor of antiquities, it is my duty to stop treasure hunters and looters from raiding sea raids. But fate is a funny thing. Now I find myself working with Jack Alexander, a treasure hunter, to protect history from a known looter. Did my heart's desire change? Now from the point of view of Captain Jack Alexander. I've been told women on a ship are unlucky, but this one has the two pieces of the map I need to finally claim sea race. Now I find myself in a deal that makes me one third partner with her and a known scoundrel. Can the two unlikely allies work together while safeguarding their hearts against the power of the mortar and pestle? If you like Laura Croft and Indiana Jones, you'll love Zara Corbin and Jack Alexander. All right. That sounds very, very intriguing and uh, adventuresome. It does. I love love the story, and it's gotten some really great reviews, and people are just you know just liking it. And um, and it was it was such a hoot to write. It was my first first historical because it takes place post World War II, um, paranormal action adventure book it had it, i can't i couldn't fit enough tropes into it you know i, I just kind of went with it and uh it really it was fun to write fun looking at the 1940s vernacular how they talked about snapping your cap and calling sailors squiddies and things like that it was just <laughs> it was just amazing we went to we went to maine um to the shipyard in maine and we went oh. to cape cod and we vis actually visited the um the widow uh, galley museum which is a pirate museum um the, oh, the story yeah. is loose loosely based on um on sam bellamy and the uh, the widow galley that went off went down off the coast of um of cape cod and wasn't found until uh 
mid 1980s and then wasn't oh, wow. and it's still an ongoing salvage um of the pirate ship oh my goodness to this day to this day so oh, it was wow. doing crazy crazy research on um on the availability of technology of the time to try and unearth things i got to speak with a conservator who told us about how because prior to a certain time, it was smash and grab. They have these things they're called concretions. And a concretions are what you see under the water. It's the shells and the silt and the sediment that have turned the objects like into a rock. Um, oh, and wow. They used to just smash them open. If, if something survived, it survived. If it didn't, they'd just move on to smash something else. Oh, um, my gosh. Yeah, but yeah. It, how now they just, they do it slowly and with a, a Electrol um I don't want to say electrolysis, I think that's taking your hair off. Um, but yeah. yeah, so all that all this crazy research went into it, which was just fun. And then writing writing the ghost into the story. Oh um, yes, and, I was gonna ask you. Well, that leads me to my first interview question. I know you write in other genres as <laughs> as we've established, but what is it about the paranormal realm that inspires you to write in that genre? I, probably my favorite genre is fantasy paranormal. Um, I go back and forth between the two. There's a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's, there's a difference in them in my, in my mind. Um, but in the paranormal, just like the fantasy, it's a chance to step away from, from real life and enter a place where anything can happen. And I really love a good ghost story. Um, some of my yeah. favorites are, uh, you know, of ghost stories and stuff that, um, uh, I, I go back to even the ghost of Mrs. Muir way back, oh, you know, oh. do you remember that? I mean, what a lovely That's story. That's one of my favorites. Yes. yes. Beautiful yes. story. Not only the movie, there was a television show and stuff with, yeah. you know, with it. So, um, and it's just, we always, I think as humans and people, we always want there's not always an explanation for things that happen. Right. And we try yeah. to put explanations to it, but um but it's it's a chance of magic. I, I love these things about magic and and just the what ifs that happen. That um, yeah, yeah. I really love being diving into it. So um, so yeah. So it, it was taking this took me a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, I never wrote a ghost story before, but oh, okay. um, but it was it was it was fun to do it, and uh, yeah, I, yeah. I plan on doing more. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So uh, this is the beginning of uh, something new for you. So I do, I do have <laughs> paranormal, <laughs> sure. I do have, um, I wrote paranormal um, little novellas, um, but for oh. mid-grade, they're, they're mysteries. Um, they are uh, the Agent Sam Carter uh, mysteries. And they're, that, they're so funny because my nephew, Carter, he, um, he was about, seven years old maybe and we're at a Christmas concert and he's climbing over laps and he comes and he props himself down beside me so I hear you write books <laughs> how, man, how, you. how cute is that that's adorable so he says I want you to write a book about me and I want to write a motorcycle and have a really long mustache Oh. So Agent Carter and the mystery at Branch Lake showed up and spoiler alert, it's got Bigfoot in it. Um, oh, but okay. other things yeah. like shapeshifters and, and stuff, and it's kind of an urban mystery, fantasy, paranormal thing. Wonderful. Um, contemporary times. And then the second book came out, which is the mystery at High Point Tower, which also has a lot of paranormal elements to it. Oh, okay. So you've been at this for a while. <laughs> that all sounds great. So anyway, okay, so you mentioned The Ghost of Mrs. Muir, but is there another favorite paranormal movie or TV show that you enjoy now or when you were growing up? Oh, yeah, well, you know, when we look at things like Indiana Jones and Lara Croft that I have on the book, the, that, yeah, kind yeah. Of, that kind of thing always, you know, always tricks, you know, makes me go. I was just looking at some old videos of Bewitched remember oh, yeah, with yeah. Samantha and uh, and um so uh, her and uh you know the crazy things that they got into her yeah. and Aunt Clara and Endora and stuff so you know those are the kind of things right. that I grew up on but I grew up with such a diverse reading thing I never 
I've never been a big TV or movie person, but oh, I, okay. I, right. you could find me. You know, you, I, I watch them and I, I do love them, but you could find me, you know, my family, they never looked up. So actually they couldn't find me because I would go out and sit up in the apple tree in front of our house and I'd have my nose buried, buried in a book. And it could be anything from, oh, you know, from a course book and dog books to uh -huh. mystery books, later on romances. And then, and then I found the paranormal romances, which I really love. Right. Um, great fan of, um, Presley Cole, and she writes a fabulous ghost story. Um, oh, okay. Right. Kiss of Winter, yeah. I think it is. Janine Frost. I love Janine Frost. So, oh, I've heard of her. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love I love her uh, Cat Crawford uh, books. Um, I guess even yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, at some point. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, was watching that. So, you know, so there's, right. there's so much and so many different things. But I think one of the funnest was I that I one of the earliest things I remember was um it was a movie that they put on TV and I couldn't wait to see it. I was a young teenager and it was called Shangri La and it was about this oh. paradise. And I was so mad because uh, all our neighbors came over with the kids and they're all running through the house. And I'm, at that time you couldn't record things on TV. You just had oh. to watch it in real, yeah. you in know. Real time, real time. So, yeah. So anytime there's magic, you know, I just, I just, just really love it. Oh yeah, me too. I remember Sh Shangri La exactly. Um, so I have to oh, add. Oh, 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 what? What? Warehouse thirteen. Did Warehouse you ever 13? see Warehouse thirteen? Um, no, no. Is you that have a to look, movie look or that TV? Up. It was a TV show, okay. and we okay. we just actually. Um, went back online and watched the, the entire bunch of seasons over again it's paranormal and mystery and funny um really really good and also the librarians was another um oh i remember that one. yeah mm -hmm. no, but no where, warehouse, warehouse 13 hysterical funny um just really good it was good uh, the I, guy who played um I can't even remember who played it, but anyway, yeah. Look up Warehouse Thirteen. I, it was really okay. Fresh. I that sounds familiar to me too. I think I, I will definitely look that up for sure. Um, but I I do have to ask this next. So, have you ever seen a ghost or had a paranormal experience yourself? Um, that was a that got to be a very serious question for me because I did not see a ghost. I've been in houses that are just kind of weird and I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm not going to be part of it. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, paranormal takes a lot of different tact. And I actually came in, in contact with um, somebody who was possessed, um, scared. Me. In your, I'm sorry, in your emergency medical technician mystery? Yes. EMT? It was, I got called. Um, I, wow. I worked in a, part of my thing is I worked in a woman's state prison and um there was a um it was it was more for mental uh cases this whole section and I went on a call over there and I sat down to talk to this woman and Stara I tell you she looked at me I looked in her eyes she just smiled and you could just see the evil in her Oh, and yeah, I got yeah. myself out of there and uh, oh I could not go back in. She was fine. She was fine physically. Nothing happened to her physically. Yeah. It was kind of a routine thing. But then the nurses took care of her after that because I, in, my, in my spirit, I recognized the evil in her spirit. And it was just. Wow. You know, and you're and you're um, Catholic and Christian, right? So mm -hmm. it's like you could, you know, I mean, anyone could probably see that. But still, especially you, you're kind of aware wow that's crazy yeah. it was wow. you know so when people talk about you know all these things they don't yeah they do they do and i'm, I'm oh, a pretty yes, balanced yeah. person and i'm pretty skeptical and pretty cynical about different things and people tell me stuff all the time and i'll be like oh yeah it's, you know it's great works right for you. right but yeah no that but was, when you see it yourself it's different it's, it's very, very different, different and it's very yes. frightening and it's not something you want to mess with because that was just right I'm hoping they got her an exorcist or something. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm not making a joke. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. But, yeah, you know, 
um, you know, the, you know, so many times there's, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of mental illness there. And I actually was discussing this with my brother the other night and stuff. And he's like, oh, it's just mental illness. I'm like, no, I've been around mental illness. I've, I've been yeah. around people that had, you know, but this was an entirely different thing. And, yeah. you know. Yeah. And your sixth sense, your intuition is going to ping really hard on that, no. you know. Yeah, uh, definitely. Oh my goodness, I'm set. I'm glad you got out of there. Um, so sorry, I have hair. In it. <laughs> I like <laughs> my, to keep. I, it. Mine up. I tell everyone I, I like to keep it real here. This isn't mm -hmm. a formal thing, even though I we're you know doing the ambiance and everything. <laughs> we're still Ooh. getting keep it real here. I mean, my cat flicked her tail in my face at the beginning of the uh, interview. Anyway, so. <laughs> Um, what advice would you give for aspiring authors, like especially those who are working on their manuscript and trying to find a publisher or agent, maybe? Okay, so so starting with the people who say, you know, think that they might have a story to tell, like Nike said, just do it. Um, I was very, um, I, I was very timid about writing when it started. It started different things over the years and just didn't uh didn't um take and then I started actually really writing and I kept locking my computer so nobody could see it you know write for yourself the first draft yeah. that first book write for yourself don't worry about it now when you get to a certain point and you're you start looking at um okay now I have this what am I going to do with it at that point you find and retain the best editor that you can afford yeah. you know i'm on type of it you know we just we we kind of communicated over the week i retired um two years ago but recently due to financial things i had to re-enter the workforce so my budget's yeah. really tight yeah. you know um but i i've made mistakes in the past my first um my first book that i released um was a um, it's called Felice, and it's a fantasy romance, but I let that go without the proper editing, and I pulled it back off years later, had it re-edited, recovered, oh. and reissued, so do-over, you know, do-overs are fine, you can, you can do yeah. that. Um, if you're looking to, I'm hybrid, so I go both ways, I go, I go independent, and I also publish through the Wild Rose Press, they pretty much handle my, um, my contemporary stories and my independence are more um, on my indie side. So <clears throat> I like having both. I like, you know, I like yes. being, I ha having the flexibility. Some people are like, yeah. I'm only independent. That's great. You know, go for it, make money. But I like the community of being with the publisher. Um, the people right. that I meet, we help each other. We're, 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 it's because of Wild Rose Press that Sea Hunter was written because I met some other authors through uh -huh. uh, through Wild Rose. We started a, like a little support group and all of a sudden somebody's like, we should write a book together. Okay, let's do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I interviewed Sydney Winward and she's part of that board group. She designed all the covers. Sydney did? Oh, that's great. She designed all she's the so covers. She's so talented. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're gorgeous. Look at all that. Every one, and they're beautiful. Wow. We get more people. I was just at a yeah. uh, book signing um, last weekend, and oh. um, yep, yeah, uh, Romance Con up in um, Connecticut. Oh, and great! Oh, I missed it. Oh, wow. by the table and zoomed right in on Sea Hunter's cover because it's such a gorgeous cover. It so, is. So you're gonna you so now so you either you you get it. Um, send query letters out to uh to publishers if that's the route you want to go and even if you're independent i would still send query letters out because sometimes you get really good information back um and you can always until the papers or paperwork is signed you don't have you know you're not held to anything yeah so yeah but if you're going to go independent now you have to get the best book cover that you can afford it comes down see that's the right. problem of right. being independent it costs a lot of money to yeah. pay the editors to get the books have everything formatted that's all on you where with wild rose they handle all that i send them the book we oh, re-edit okay. it goes back and forth a couple of times i get my input but i don't pay anything you know right, right. Um, right. 
So, um, so there's two different ways of going with it. And I think each person has to decide what the best way is for them. You can always go independent and then still query out to, um, to publishers. But the thing is you, you may get 10 refusals and, and, and or more hundreds of, uh, oh, yeah. of oh, yeah. declining, and, but you just keep doing it. Keep doing and it. And when you say independent, you mean self-publishing. Self-publishing, right? yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And there's so many options now. I mean, what, maybe 20 years ago, I mean, or 30 years ago, it wasn't like it is now. There's So it can get very confusing for new authors because like, what am I gonna do, you know? But I like you're saying, I, I guess research everything, you know, research self-publishing versus trying to find a publisher, uh, you know, and my, my, uh, I'm with Wild Rose Press, uh, Bay of Darkness began with, I was trying to find an agent first, like I went to, I pitched it at conferences and everything, and it was like there was romance and paranormal and all these different elements, but it wasn't really paranormal romance, it's more like paranormal fiction but there was kind of romance so they couldn't exactly they liked it but they didn't know how to categorize mm -hmm. so then I finally just said I'm gonna uh, try to find an ebook publisher and then in that research I found Wild Rose Press and they were mm -hmm. describing their different uh, divisions and I think I'm in Black Rose and it sounded like they were talking about my book they go send us your fairies your demons your you know vampires mm -hmm. your blah 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 and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have mythological Celtic creatures in mind oh with a, a psychic woman who banishes them with her team, like a Scooby gang. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so they took it, you know, because I realized, oh, they, they're talking about my book. So anyway, it was a matching it up. Yeah, it, well, it was funny how I ended up <clears throat> with the Wild Rose Press. It was crazy. I, I, I sent out, sent out queries every month. So my first book that they picked up was Rock House Grill, which is a contemporary romantic suspense. And that was a NaNoWriMo project, the National no Novel Writing Month, 50,000 words, 30 days ago. Um, yeah. So I had sent out a bunch of queries. Usually every month I send a bunch out. And I, then I, you know, just kind of check and see what comes back in. And I opened up the email to Wild Rose Press. And in the salutation, I had another publisher. And I'm like, oh, so I quit. <laughs> I know you're the Wild Rose Press. I know you're the Wild Rose Press. I'm so sorry. I know you're the Wild Rose Press. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, well, I just shot myself in the foot. I'm never going to hear from them. <laughs> this is my this is my birthday weekend. All of a sudden, my computer goes ding, and uh, it's Rhonda. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Just, like, so, you sent me your uh, your query and your uh, your uh... five pages or synopsis yeah, yeah synopsis. i'm like okay and then so i send it and you get the thing back and says well i'll be uh we'll be back in touch in five to six weeks something like that and, You'll something. and i'm sorry Rhonda penders is the editor-in-chief of wild rose press just to let people know so like i said now this is my birthday weekend so i think that was like on saturday so i think 12 hours later ding the computer goes off again send me your manuscript oh, <laughs> like, there you go <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Uh, off I go. And, you know, and then we just kind of went back and forth a little bit. Elf is my um, my editor for um, from Wild Rose Press. And I absolutely love her. Um, oh, we great. just see eye to eye. We work really well together. Yeah. So yeah. so anyway, long story short, we signed the contract for the first one. Then we signed the contract for the second one. And then I have two contemporary like paranormal, they're guardian angel kind of books. And those are oh. in the ebooks. E one is for um, one was in the ice cream book and books, um, one scoop or two. And the other one is in the jelly beans and spring things. And they both take place in the same town with a bunch of the same people kind of flittering in and out of uh, the books and i'm actually working oh, okay. on the thir third one in uh, we, i call it lake unami um a place where magical things happen so, oh i like i like that place a yeah. lot i really like that place <laughs> so. oh that sounds wonderful so wait let me see where we're at here um we're at the closing so uh with the few moments left are there any last thoughts or comments about anything we've talked about that you want to add um, as far as publishing and, 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 and sending out your books and sending out your, your baby, your book baby out into the world, you know, 
there's people that do naysayers, you know, the, there's people that are not going to like your book. There's people that don't like anything, you know, that if they can, if they can, if they can rain on somebody's parade, they're going to do it. Um, right, I get right. that a lot with reviews and things like that. Um, it, we had a saying uh, back at work, those who can't do, those who can't manage, um, those who can write, those who can't critique. Uh, and usually, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like one or two star kind of things are going out. Yeah. Um, don't listen necessarily to one or two of those naysayers um, because not every book is for every book person. Um, yeah. If more than three are saying the exact same thing, you need to look at it. You need to see why if they're saying the yeah, same thing. More feedback. You know, if there's if there's a pattern to anything, you wanna you wanna look at that pattern and see. But don't you know? You have to kind of develop thick skin and not let it get you. Um, because, like I said, not every book is yeah, for every yeah. person, and uh, and yeah. you know, not every not every theme, every type. That's what that's what what makes the world go around. So we have, right, we have right. you know. No, Everybody has different opinions, different thoughts, different ideas, different beliefs, and we just need to have, be able to have a civilized discourse about it. And if you don't, Mama yeah. always said, if you don't have anything nice to say to someone, then don't say anything. So, um, you know, my mom said I, that too. <laughs> I don't. I do reviews on yeah. on books. Um, I will never post less than a three-star review i try not to do stores anyway i think stores are stupid um uh, because it's oh, very yeah. subjective um but uh but you know what be, be nice be kind yeah. To, yeah. to people yeah. listen yeah. to what they say here don't just listen but hear what they're saying um you know and uh yeah then yeah. move on <laughs> Exactly. And then everyone likes different genres. I mean, I'm not going to be digging into a um, political, historical fiction. That's just not my thing. Mm -mm. And some people don't go into the paranormal. That's, gee, do I write the paranormal? I think so. Anyway, <laughs> and I'm not offended by that at all. If someone, you know, I had someone say one time, I was, well, I was at a conference. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I have to. I was at a conference and I was with someone who I just met and she ran into some friends and, and these guys said, Hey, blah, blah. And it was like a thriller conference. And they said, Oh, this is star. What do you write? I'll, I'll write paranormal. And this guy actually looked at me and he goes, eh, I don't know, you know, cause they were both horror writers like Stephen King and real, real mm -hmm. hardcore horror. That's great. And I just yeah. said, oh, uh, excuse me, I have to go to lunch or whatever I said. I said, okay, mm -hmm. excuse me. I've got, and I was nice, but for someone to just look at me and go, I don't know about paranormal. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, you know, that's before I was published with Wild Rose Press. And I, I, you know, I've only brought this up actually right now. I told like my sisters after it happened, but I haven't thought of that guy since. And I'm using it as an example, but that's because I let it go. I let it go. I'm like, okay, you know what? This person wants to judge someone who's not in horror. So, you know, that's fine. That's that's fine. I was actually yeah. at a writing um a, a writing author event, and I was really shocked. And I I I just walked away. Um, we're at a romance writers event. Yeah. One of the actual romance writers was distinguishing romance as the not smart books. What? Wow. Yeah, I write romance, the not smart books. We're, we're all like, oh, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's disparaging herself and the 50 other people that were just standing there, you know? So- Way, way I, to so, dumb yourself down. <laughs> right? And, you know, and so, and romance, romance, you know, I write romance, paranormal romance everything's got a little romance and it. it's got to have a little love if it doesn't have a little love yeah, then I'm sure. not reading it you know um yeah romance is what makes the world go around it makes life happen and and beauty happen and sometimes it's tough and gritty and and hard but you know we yeah but I'm a romance writer it's always a happily ever after at the end so <laughs> yeah hey I've been uh binge watching uh in my spare time the Walking Dead. There's a ton of romance in The Walking Dead. <laughs> it's not always a happy ending, but but a lot of them are. You know? 
I watched that the first couple of seasons, and when they killed Glenn, I was done. I could I oh, couldn't go I back. <laughs> yeah, my sister stopped then too. I'm 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 going. I'm still going, but you know she'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, DV Stone, thank you so much for being a uh, part of yes, of creativity and the paranormal. And um, I always say this little tagline at the end. Thank you, everyone, and may all your paranormal experiences be magical. All right. Thanks, Stevie. Bye.